This is the all new 2022 Trek Top Fuel 8. And yes, believe it or not, I bought a Trek. And if you are new here, I've been known to not be the biggest fan of Trek. Okay, and saving the worst bike for last. Sorry, Trek fanboys, the Roscoe still doesn't have a boost through axle in the rear, therefore it will not be on this list. And I just saved you the trouble of asking about it in the comments. And I'm gonna go ahead and save you and myself a bunch of time. No, there are no Treks on this list. I've gotten so many comments about Trek bikes in the previous videos, but my lack of enthusiasm for the brand mostly comes from their lower end bikes, such as the Marlin. I do think Trek's higher end bikes are very nice, but they're still not the best value in mountain biking, and this bike is no exception. But sometimes I do put aside logic and reason when making a purchase, because look at this thing, it looks f***ing incredible. No, this doesn't make me a Trek fanboy now, and I do stand behind what I've said in previous videos, so deal with it, haters! While I really did enjoy my nuke-proof reactor, I've been searching for months for a short travel replacement in the downcountry segment. I do think the industry missed a huge opportunity to name this segment Triple XC Extra Extreme Cross Country because that sounds way cooler than downcountry, and as we all know, sex sells. And to go further into this rabbit hole, if Brian ever starts an OnlyFans, he could call it BK Triple XC. <laughs> I actually ordered two different bikes before this one online, but due to shipping and inventory issues, both of those fell through. So when I saw that this bike was in stock at my local bike shop, I figured I'd better go check it out. And then when I saw it in person, I kind of knew I had to have this bike. A big thank you to John and the entire team over at Bike World for selling me this bike, getting it all nice and dialed, and acting very professional in the presence of a local D-list celebrity. This Top Fuel 8 retails for $3,800, and it is the top spec aluminum build. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that this is a budget bike, because that is a lot of money, but you would honestly be surprised how difficult it is to find a short travel aluminum bike under $4,000. Luckily for that price, this bike does come pretty dialed, and I don't see any reason to upgrade anything right away. So what's changed from the 2021 model? This bike is a size large, so I'll be using those numbers to compare, and it also comes shipped in the low geometry setting, which I'm probably going to leave it in. The head tube angle has been slackened 1.5 degrees to 66 degrees, and the effective seat tube angle has been steepened 1 degree to 76 degrees. The reach has been increased by 10 millimeters, and the wheelbase has been increased by 29 millimeters. Suspension travel up front is the same at 120 millimeters, but rear suspension travel has increased by 5 millimeters from 115 to 120. Two really nice changes to this, in my opinion, are the addition of a threaded bottom bracket and this really cool internal down tube storage. It's pretty sweet, right? This bike would probably only be around $2,500 if it didn't have that feature, but that is so cool. I would gladly pay an additional $1,300 for that. Trek, take my money. Jokes aside, I do think that feature is super cool, and this is the first aluminum bike ever to have that. My hope is that becomes standard on every bike. Another change is the knock block 2.0. I know a lot of people didn't love the original knock block design, but this new version has an increased turning radius from 58 to 72 degrees. So far, I've had no issues in tight corners, but do keep in mind you can remove the knock block system. Spec-wise, it uses the RockShox SID with 35mm stanchions and the Rush RL damper. The rear shock is the RockShox Deluxe Ultimate RCT, and as you can see from last year's model, they've inverted the shock, or reverted it, however you want to look at it. It has a Shimano 12-speed partial XT group set, with the shifter and derailleur being XT and the cassette being SLX. Due to the global parts shortage, my bike actually came specced with an SLX crankset rather than a Dior crankset that's advertised on the Trek website. Brakes are the Shimano M6120, four piston calipers, which I think is pretty cool to see on a 120mm travel bike. The rotors are SLX with a 180mm up front and a 160mm out back. Thank you Trek for specking this bike with rotors that can accept both resin and metal pads. 
I hate getting a new bike and the rotors say resin pad only. Maybe you like resin pads, that is fine. I personally prefer metal pads and I don't want to have to upgrade my rotors just to upgrade the pads. Wheels are the Bontrager Line 30 Comp with the Rapid Drive 108 hub and that hub has some seriously impressive engagement. Tires are the Bontrager XR4s, and I absolutely love that they came in this tan wall color. I think that's another spec choice because of the part shortage, uh, because on the website they have black tires. And it has a 170 millimeter travel Trans X dropper post that I already have a 200 millimeter replacement on the way for. I don't like having all that extra post sticking out, so I went with a longer travel post. Frame protection is pretty generous on this bike with a very nice down tube protector and an even nicer chainstay protector. I don't know if this is a super unique feature or I'm just super out of touch with chainstay protectors, but this one is held securely in place by a little Allen bolt. This bike even comes with ISC G tabs so you can run a bash guard, which means you can do some extra extreme cross country riding on it. I brought that term back from earlier, clever. All the other parts on this bike are Bontrager branded, and I have to say, these may be the first grips that came stock on a bike that I don't absolutely hate. With this bike going up in travel and using some burlier parts this year, unfortunately, it has gone up in weight. Mine currently weighs 32.18 pounds, and that is tubeless with these clipless pedals. 32.84 pounds with my Bontrager branded storage bag, which includes a mini pump, multi-tool, and some tire levers. I've done a small handful of rides on this bike so far, and initial impressions are good. I've even crashed on it already. <laughs> With this bike being about two to three pounds lighter than my Nuke Proof, it's definitely noticeable and a lot more enjoyable to pedal around. It's also a much easier bike to climb on. This short technical climb at McAllister Park, for example, I've always struggled with this climb, but on this bike, I was able to get up it my second attempt. That $3,800 price tag isn't looking so bad now. Downhill this bike is fun, but you can tell it's a lot more twitchy than a larger travel bike. You do have to be a bit more on your toes and think a little bit more about what you're doing when riding a bike like this downhill, but I would argue that that is part of the fun. Don't buy this bike with the expectation that you can just smash through any line you want going downhill and not pay for it later with chronic back pain. I wish I could tell you more about this bike's ride characteristics, but I've only had it for about a week or two, so I'll have more thoughts on it later down the road. I guess you'll just have to subscribe and come back. So while I'm still not some huge Trek fanboy, I am really stoked on this bike, and I do think we're starting to see somewhat of a Trek renaissance as they're starting to update some of their older designs. The Slash was just updated, the Roscoe was updated, this was updated, I believe the rail e-bike was just updated, so I think Trek is starting to make a competitive comeback. I would really like to see Trek bring back the Stash, and even the Full Stash, I really liked both of those bikes, and it's a shame they discontinued them. This new Top Fuel has a lot of well thought out design and features, and even though I don't see the term down country as anything more than a marketing term, I do believe that this short travel trail bike segment hits the sweet spot for a lot of riders. So there you have it. That is my new full suspension bike for at least the next year. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this. And uh, am I a sellout? That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, stay rowdy within reason. Look, Salem. You alright? XE bike walking it up the hill. Oh no, don't <laughs>